Hello and welcome to today's video and in this video I'm going to show you the difference between LED lighting and fluorescent lighting and we could also have a vote while we do this so if you think fluorescent lighting is better like this video if you think LED lighting is better dislike this video and if you just don't care don't do either so now you're looking at my numbers boxes the one that's got FLU is the front number display and it is lit with two 6 watt fluorescent lights which I'm going to show in a minute the LED one I've had for some time and the fluorescent lights never worked in this so I converted it myself to, by using lorry marker lights to LED and you can tell that the fluorescent lights are slightly warmer than the LED lights and then the front panel I'll also show that that runs a standard Sylvania F30 33640 cool white fluorescent lamp and it has a ballast on as well and all these lights of course are running 24 volts so they are safer at the 24 volt end but just as well they'll give you a shock if you touch the live the um the output side so always be careful when working with electricity even 24 volt dc and 12 volt dc can give you a bit of a punch especially if there's capacitors involved so i think the first thing we're going to do is i'll quickly show the front display and then we'll go inside the numbers boxes so i'm just going to pause while i reset up the camera okay this is the fluorescent light and the back panel to the main roller destination and there is no room at all inside to fit the ballast so when these were fitted by bright tech developments into the buses they fitted the ballast for these lights loose on the bus somewhere and this meant that when the destinations were removed from the buses to be converted to Hanover displays the ballast was never removed so luckily I managed to find a bus that we still had that still had one in and you have seen this ballast before in other videos uh, a Walderman's um, smash proof light was when it first appeared and basically I'm going to turn this thing around show you the information on the fluorescent light first there we go and this was the tube that was in this light it was also made in Germany and it's got some more information about it but we get a lot of Sylvania tubes and then on the other side we have the information on the display And I fitted the ballast on here. Now this sticker is damaged. But basically the 24 volts goes in to your right. And then the connections to the tube go out on the left. And this is the correct ballast for this fitting. So what we'll do is we'll put that back down. And I'll now go into the fluorescent light box. So I'm just going to pause again for one minute or so. Okay, this is the original fluorescent lighting that these um, numbers boxes came with. And they contain these two tubes. This is one of the original ones that were in it. And... 
There we go. Standard T5 F6 Watt 35. And these are GE, and they're made in China, so they're not the original ones. And basically, they are wired quite interestingly. So what we'll do is we'll turn it on first. These only seem to glow at one end of each tube and then the circuit runs across. So I'll just turn it on. There we go, preheat one end only. I suppose they did this because they couldn't light up the display properly using a 8 watt tube. So they decided to use two sixes. And what I'm going to do is we'll go off the tripod and I'll show you the ballast. This is the ballast. There's loads of parts on here. I'll show you this side first. I think this is the higher voltage end and the 24 volt side. And there's a diode at the top that's been getting very hot. What has happened in the past is this capacitor here, when these tubes start to burn out, has blown and then is then now rolling around inside the middle display and this damages the rollers. Now I expect the reason why they fitted this on the inside was because A, they'd got room inside the, the gap on this middle roller. There's the outer roller and there's the barcodes and the motors and everything. And on the other side, I'll show you, is the running gear for the actual display itself. And this is the back of the display and the reason why they couldn't fit the present light equipment inside. The present light equipment is fitted just here with my fingers at the very, very top on two plastic screws. And this is the main motherboard that controls the entire destination. The other numbers box is just a slave. If this one goes wrong, nothing works. Well, anyway, I think we'll do now is we'll go to the LED converted one. So again, I'm going to pause while I just set this up. So I'll be back in a minute. And of course, this is my converted LED box. Now I could have done this a bit different, but I had five LED lamps and I could get them to fit inside like this. So this is how I did it. And when the displays are on, they look exactly the same, apart from obviously these are more daylight and the others are more warm white. And again, I'm going to show the, the rear of this display at the very, very top. Before we do that, I'll just, you can see the burn mark where the original ballast supply was. So the original ballast supply was here and the fluorescent lights were fitted roughly there and there. So I'm just going to pause once more. And this is the back side of the rear display. Now I've used um, tape to protect the wiring of the LED lights I fitted against the circuit board from the back. There is a clearance, but I didn't want anything to touch. And of course, if anybody is interested, the power supply I use for when using this destination display is this one. And basically, it's been around since the first video, and it does. I seem to 
load it up with everything and it always kind of works. These are freely available on eBay and other sources of course and the output is 24 volts and it's got some more information on there as well so that's the output 3.7 SA at 24 volts the brand and of course the input and the advantage of these is they are universal so they work in America as well as here anywhere between 100 volts AC to 240 at either 50 or 60 Hertz so a very very useful power supply well, anyway I might say 